Yes, welcome everyone. We are going to have a discussion on primary health care. And by the end of this discussion, you will have understood the definition of uh, primary health care, uh, its historical uh, roots, and then you also look at the, the different uh, principles of primary health care. And then lastly, we shall look at uh, the elements of primary health care. So in this presentation, we will start with the definition. The definition of primary health care is quite long, um, but what you need to realize is that there are some key terminologies that So the key terms that you need to be familiar with are terms like uh, essential care that is based on uh, or essential health care that is based on uh, uh, practically sound and socially acceptable methods and technology that are accessible to every uh, member of the community through their full participation at a cost that the community or the country can actually afford to maintain uh, everyone at the my god this one now it's going to be very difficult <laughs> so definition all right so welcome everybody we are going to have a discussion on primary health care primary health care is uh, quite uh, a wide concept that you need to understand because um, we apply it in our health system you know me that our health system um, is anchored on um, on principles of primary health care. Um, so uh, what you need to understand with primary health care is that this is care that should be available to everyone um, and should be provided in a way that is socially acceptable using the technologies that are socially acceptable and they're also affordable um, to maintain at every stage of development of any entity, whether it is a country, whether it is a state. Yeah, so that care that should be accessible to everyone that uses the appropriate uh, uh, science and the appropriate technology that every member of a given community embraces is what we call uh, primary health care. So the concept is that um, different countries actually employ primary health care, but of course, there's, there's a distinction in how they apply these principles of primary health care. So um, across different countries, uh, there are different needs, there are different health care needs that are, are existing. And therefore, the primary health care is tailored to meet the needs of a particular uh, community, country, whatever, in any uh, health system. Um, often, the term primary care can be used to mean primary health care. Okay? Primary care basically means that when someone gets sick, usually they will go to a nearby health facility in their community, and that forms the first point of contact between a patient and the healthcare system. So sometimes primary health care can be referred as primary care. So the word can be used interchangeably. So the concept of primary health care emanated um, in 19, uh, 18, 1978 when there was a conference uh, held in, uh, in, in Kazakhstan. Uh, and this conference was basically organized by um, organizations such as uh, WHO, uh, UNICEF, and other countries. Um, about 134 countries actually participated with about 300 de delegates attending. So the delegates um, uh, came from different spheres of, uh, of, of life, but, or different uh, uh, professionals. These are, we had uh, uh, the, the civil servants, civil servants, uh, people in the education sector, uh, charity organizations, religious organizations, and also political organizations. Really, before the conference took place, people were already uh, understanding the concept of primary health care in addressing prob uh, uh, health problems at the, more at, at, at the time. And therefore, 
they went to attend these conferences when they had already bought in the idea of primary health care. And therefore, uh, the product of that conference was the declaration of Alma Ata, um, which is basically a slogan for uh, health for all by the year 2000. So that document uh, uh, emphasized key issues. One was that uh, the appropriate technology should be used. And there was also a significant criticism of uh, what you call medical elitism, which is the fact that uh, people were over specializing and yet most of the of the challenges or most of the challenges in developing countries needed actually uh, skills that don't need a lot of specialization. And then also that's when they drew up the link between health and development and therefore bring up what we call uh, the intersectoral uh, approach. Um, the other issue is uh, about the principles on, on which primary health care is anchored on. One is that the healthcare services should be accessible and most members of the community should be able to access these uh, services. Um, and then uh, the other concept is that uh, it should be best on or a lot of resources should be devoted on preventing diseases and also health promotion. Uh, and then uh, community involvement and participation is very key. And then the fact that different sectors can actually need actually to work together in order to promote health. And then lastly, that the technology should be appropriate and should also be cost effective. So the elements of primary health care include uh, 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 identifying health problems within the community and educating the same community about um, ways of um, uh, solving or preventing those health problems. And then the other one is provision of food supply and proper, uh, proper nutrition. And then the other element is uh, uh, um, provision of adequate safe water and basic sanitation and maintaining uh, and improving or promotion of um, maternal and child health, including provision of family planning, and then others include uh, uh, immunization against major infectious diseases and prevention of endemic conditions, and then um, uh, treatment of those common conditions and injuries, and then provision of essential uh, drugs. So we are going to look at uh, terms that are basically related to these concepts that are uh, uh, form the, uh, the elements of primary health care. So when we talk about identifying diseases or prob health problems in the community, we want to look at the issues that actually affect health. Um, what conditions are prevailing and um, what are the factors associated with those conditions and who are the people actually being affected by these conditions and what actually needs to be done uh, to solve these health problems. So when we talk about the concept of primary uh, health, health promotion, we are, we are basically empowering the community members to be able to increase control over their lives and therefore they should be that's such that they can have better health outcomes. Um, so it, it is not only enabling people having control, or individual people having control, but it also looks at the other social and environmental interventions that are aimed at improving people's lives. When we talk about uh, disease prevention, we are basically looking at the fact that uh, we shouldn't be allowing diseases to happen uh, in individuals who don't have them. So the primary focus of um, uh, disease prevention strategies is to reduce, reduce the risk of developing uh, diseases. So uh, coming to disease control is when now we look at reducing the incidence of the prevalence um, of a particular condition in a particular location. So that means that there should be actions that are aimed at ensuring that uh, conditions don't happen. So they, they reduce in number. Health, from, health education uh, is a terminology that actually um, deals with empowering people by giving them skills uh, and knowledge on how they can actually improve their lives and also prevent diseases that are happening. When people understand health problems, 
they can be in position to prevent them. So when we talk about prevention, we can look at it in three levels. We have uh, primary prevention, which is basically looking at um, making sure that people don't become sick in the first place. So issues to do with proper feeding, proper vaccination, uh, you know, immunization, and proper uh, uh, breastfeeding. These are primary uh, prevention measures. So we can look at primary prevention measures when we are applying them uh, to individuals or when we're applying it to the community at large. So ensuring that people have, for example, clean water, uh, and they have uh, access to um, uh, clean food or food that is not contaminated uh, with fecal matter and other things. These are interventions that are primary in nature. Secondary, um, secondary prevention is one that focuses on identifying disease illnesses um, in populations before uh, um, identifying uh, illnesses before they actually start to manifest um, or before the signs uh, start to manifest. So issues to do with early detection that is screening uh, is very important or even contact tracing. This is the contact tracing. This is very important to ensure that people uh, are identified at an early stage uh, the, before they start uh, having the signs and symptoms of a particular disease. So this actually improves uh, uh, the outcomes. And then there are people who are already sick and they're already receiving treatment, but um, they may have got some disabilities caused by the disease. So the, the emphasis in tertiary prevention is that the people who already have the disease should not experience more disabilities or their quality of life should actually be improved. So issues to do with uh, uh, rehabilitation, palliative care, these are interventions in, in tertiary care. So when we talk about proper supply of food and proper nutrition, um, we are basically recognizing the fact that nutrition is very important in improving health and also preventing diseases. If we have children who are born by malnourished mothers, it is going to have uh, a health risks. Okay, this this poses a health risk to end. And therefore, it is very important that we have um, sustainable food supply and improved food productions such that uh, communities don't suffer from malnutrition. So um, there are different measures that can be instituted to ensure that uh, food production is increased um, and, and also that uh, storage, distribution, processing, all this uh, can be improved such that there is no wastage of food uh, through storage, there is no wastage of food through distribution, and there is no wastage of food through processing. Um, essential Nutrition Action, or ENA, this is uh, a framework that can be used to in advocacy and planning of uh, integrated uh, uh, package of preventing preventive nutrition actions, emphasizing proper nutrition in, uh, in infants and, uh, and, and young children and women. So therefore, the actions in, uh, in this framework include ensuring that uh, mothers have proper nutrition and that uh, the babies are breastfed from zero to six months and that uh, from six to 35 weeks, uh, they are also fed on proper complementary feeds and that uh, if the child actually gets sick, they should still pro be provided with their appropriate meals and then control of uh, the deficiencies associated with, uh, 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 with the nutrients, such as uh, iron deficiency uh, disorders, such as um, iron deficiency anemia. Provision of safe, clean water is very important because contaminated water can easily lead people to get uh, illnesses. So safe water is actually um, uh, very important in maintaining health. Uh, the safe water should be one that actually does not have any agents that can cause diseases. Um, sometimes we can have um, water points where people collect water and those water points are not having structures that guard, uh, guard them from contamination. So we call these water points uh, unprotected sources. 
So the protected water sources are those that have uh, uh, that have barriers that can prevent uh, contamination. So how do we determine that this water is safe or uh, is not? The criteria relies on the fact that uh, the water should be sufficient, that every household should have at least uh, access to water that is between uh, 50 to 100 liters per person per day. Um, and then also that the water should be safe and accessible and physical accessibility of water uh, can be categorized in either. If there is, uh, if we say that there is no access to water, that means that we are referring to uh, the fact that the water point is about one kilometer away uh, from home. And a person who goes to fetch water actually spends about 30 minutes to go and come back with water. But that water is again, uh, is still low in amount. And then basic access to water is when the water point is with, within one kilometer or 30 minutes round trip but the amount of water collected does not exceed 20 liters per capita per day. And then we have the intermediate access, which now means that the water is provided at, uh, at least a, 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 at a yard level, uh, there is a water tap. And this therefore means that um, there are about 50, uh, 50 liters per capita per day. And then the appropriate water access that we can talk about is when we have um, multiple water taps in a, in a home state, and that there is about 100 to 200 liters per capita per day. If we have that, then we have, uh, 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 um, we have optimal, that is the best that we can have. And then uh, water should be affordable. This is to say that buying water should not limit uh, a household from accessing other essential goods. And basic sanitation is very important because if we don't have sanitary facilities, it means that this pose of human wastes can be a problem and this can be to diseases. Um, so it is important that uh, there, if there are systems to collect, remove, or even dispose of human wastes uh, uh, such that uh, we prevent diseases. A uh, provision of essential uh, drugs is very, very important. So we have what you call uh, essential drugs. These are basically drugs that um, should satisfy the health needs of majority of, majority of the members of the population. Um, so here, um, we say that the drugs should be available at all times, um, at costs that are manageable, or even dosage forms that are manageable. So at all times, adequate amounts and then also at, in, in the dosage forms that can easily be used. Uh, so WHO published what we call the essential drugs list. This is a document that outlines the different drugs that should be accessible um, and, uh, in, in different categories and also in different dosage forms. So it is very important to use this uh, essential drugs list uh, for many reasons. One, it helps you to as a nation to develop national treatment guidelines and, and also uh, the national formularies. And, uh, and therefore, you are in position to procure the drugs that um, you actually need. And uh, there should be uh, easy financing mechanism for you to be able to buy these drugs. So because you know the drugs that you're going to buy and which dosage forms they are in, and they're also going to meet the different uh, uh, health needs of, of the population. Um, and then the other aspect is that uh, uh, you, you, it helps you to understand which drugs can be used for which condition. So the essential drugs list is an important document. So how would you select the essential drugs that you're going to use in a particular community? You need to understand the diseases that are there in that community and that the personnel who are going to use these drugs actually have the skill and technique to use them. And then that the country or the community that you're supplying with these drugs should be having the financial resources to be able to procure uh, these drugs sustainably. And then you should understand the other factors, whether genetic, demographic, or environmental, that can actually affect either disease prevalence or the ability to use the drugs. 
And then uh, there should be evidence uh, uh, for you to use in order to select which drugs you need to use. So there should be adequate data uh, on, on even issues to do with um, the, the, the safety and efficacy of the different drugs. Um, look at the performance of drugs, uh, of, of the particular drugs that you're going to use, and whether the drugs are in, um, um, in adequate amounts, and look at issues to do with their stability, that is just issues to do with the way, if you are to procure them, how are you going to keep them, do you have the refrigerators, are you able to keep the drugs um, in their viable forms, and then issues to do with bioavailability. Okay, thank you very much for listening to me and uh, for this discussion. Thank you.